It is a good morning. It is and a good morning. So obviously you probably were wondering where I was. And when I set these Twitter spaces up, they had this really weird like time dial thing, like a like a an analog clock face. And I assume this is the only way I could think it, it would have happened. When I swung the thing around to seven o'clock, as I took my finger away from the screen, it must have went back and hit the six. So, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't supposed to be at six o'clock. I just noticed it because I was getting ready to start the stream. And I think it was off. This says six o'clock. Now, <laughs> uh, it's highly unlikely I would do a six o'clock Twitter space, but um, it is an earlier one today. And that's because I have things I have to take care of around the house. And my wife asked me to be present for certain things. So today's topic is burning candlesticks and counting grains of sand. And for the folks that are wondering where I get these titles from and how they come about real quick, uh, it's off the cuff. I, l I look for something that's, you know, enigmatic a little bit. Sometimes it's inspired by creativity, you know, based on the things I'm thinking about, a subject matter will pop in my head. Uh, it'll usually be spawned from watching or reading other comments from other people, maybe even comments from other YouTubers in their comment section about my content or maybe struggles about what they're doing in their own trading. And I'll tap into that struggle as a topic to teach you as our community. And what's the topic mean? Like, what's that mean? Burning candlesticks? And counting grains of sand. It sounds like uh, probably get this image of some kind of uh, alchemist. He's sitting there with his wood carved desk. He's got all these little things on his desk, and candlesticks are burning. And he's got an hourglass that's counting down the grains of sand falling through. No, <laughs> it's it's us as traders when we first start. Uh, we're looking at these candlesticks on the chart, and we're trying to make sense of it all and pursue a dream, a passion, an impulse. And we're always at the same time counting the grains of sand. I'm running out of time. I have to find the solution to this by this date or this particular time, or I won't be quote unquote, un, well, not un, but I won't be successful, put it that way. So placing too much emphasis on getting there on a time that you want in terms of success and trying to do a whole lot more than what's necessary staring at the charts. That's basically what I'm getting at. And I want to ask you some questions and, and this will only be an hour long presentation today. I have a timer set here, so I will absolutely be closing it at eight o'clock and you're welcome to get back to your weekend. But do you waste your time? You ever thought about how much time you actually been wasting? Uh, for some people that don't really want to learn or have the right mindset, they'll think that these types of discussions and presentations by me and people that have wisdom and have experience doing something will sit down and, and make available to other people. Uh, they would see this as a waste of time or a boring session of not really getting to anything. And if you're extremely profitable, and consistent, and you don't have any hardships whatsoever from a psychological point, then I could agree readily that this is probably a boring session. For anyone that's successful, you know, consistently profitable, they know what they're looking for as a trader, they're not watching or listening to anything I'm putting up. They've already found their way. I have students that don't sit in on these. They're making money. They're doing their own thing. It's not, I don't view that as disrespectful. I don't, I don't need their support. And I don't want you to be tethered to me. The whole point is for you to be independently minded, have a goal, a purpose, a principle-oriented approach to trading. So that way you know what you're doing, when you're going to do it, and why you're going to do it, or why you're not going to do it. But a, a terrible thing occurs in this, in the beginning is where you waste a lot of time. And that time wasting can be based on 
following failed logic from failed mentors that don't have the, the evidence to show what they can anticipate in price action presenting itself in real time in all different time frames, which is why I do a lot of the, the teaching methodologies that I do. I, I use a lot of lower time frame time time frame charts. So that way there's a lot of examples. There's lots of examples. And it also teaches you to go in and not waste your time burning candlesticks needlessly. Because think about how much time from the very first day you started contemplating being a trader. You would look at these candlesticks on the chart and try to figure out what it means to you. Like a scrying mirror. And you're looking at it, trying to get some kind of vision from it. You, you Something's going to materialize like hieroglyphics suddenly will make sense to you. <laughs> Maybe you've read books. Maybe you looked at the uh, PDF files that's been circulated around the internet. Uh, maybe you've watched YouTube videos from other mentors, other approaches to trading, and you've dabbled, not really made an attempt to trade with it or learn it, but you've dabbled with it, looked around and see, does it really get your gears going? Do you feel inspired by the methodology or the things that would be otherwise taught by the teacher, the method, or whatever it is that you're trying to do in trading? There's a lot of time wasted in the beginning doing those types of things. And unfortunately, that is a needful thing. It is a very, very needful thing. You have to do that. You have to allow yourself some time to figure out what direction you're going to go in. There's going to be lots of those opportunities to follow something that looks shiny and new, something that looks interesting, innovative, colorful. But really, if it doesn't really stick its you know, stick its hooks into you and really latch onto you and not let you go, it isn't for you. And that's how you know you found what it is that you should be doing, whether it be the PD array that I teach or a model that someone else is teaching you or if they have something they sell. If it really resonates with you and puts its hooks in you and you just cannot get away from it, it just keeps drawing you back. Then it's just a matter of time that you have to invest to do very well with it. Because something subconsciously resonates with that. And the uncertainty or the time required for you to get good at it is the uncomfortable you know, uncertainty of not warming up to the idea in, entirely. Wasting your time looking at drama-based content, whether it be things like on TV, like news. News is a terrible thing to watch. Worrying about other people's opinions about you what you're doing, trying to compete with other people, trying to get the, the attention, the clout type thing. Um, all those things are terrible time wasters. And negative thinking, toxic negative thinking. If you do a lot of that, what will happen is over time, your, your mind will literally filter out any positive thing or any evidence to the contrary because you'll be more prone to side with the negative view that's the main staple of brainwashing if you constantly are fed something that is untrue over and over and over and over again and if you stay around that eventually you'll submit to it and you'll believe it which is why i always bitch slap all these people out here and then the, the list is growing smaller each day now <laughs> But they'll say that this stuff doesn't work, that you're learning. They'll say that I don't trade with a real account when it's right there in front of your faces. They'll say that I won't call the market before it happens. I do. They'll say that there's nobody making money with smart money concepts. And they're all over the place being interviewed, showing receipts of withdrawals and payouts, proving their executions. Like at some point, if you listen to toxicity. You'll believe it because you need it to be that way because it'll justify your own inability to stick with a process to learn it for yourself or your own failures. I watched a, a young man the other day tweet to me. He says, fuck you and your IC con ICT concepts. And I told him to eat a dick and I fucking meant it because that's the very epitome of a failed motherfucker.
That's a failure. That is a failure because you're not supposed to be trading in front of CPI. Now, that sounds hypocritical because here you saw me make $7,000 doing it. But truth be told, I wanted to take a loss. You guys never see me doing that. And I wanted you to see it. I wanted to be wrong. I was showing my youngest son. I said, look, this is how this is how bad it can be, but I'm not going to do a lot of contracts. I'll do a very small position, but it'll be big enough for some of you, most of you, to respect the fact that yeah, I probably wouldn't want to do that if it was real money. But I can afford to lose that. I could afford to lose it. It's not going to break me to do it. Your mentors, your teachers aren't going to go out there willfully put themselves in a situation to try to lose money to teach you something to prevent you from wanting to do it yourself. But they'll go out there and try to do Olympic sized feats and do max lost days on their live streams and try to peddle some bullshit like it works and it doesn't. And nobody's making money consistently with it. But you look around in our community, there's people popping up every single week that are brand new and they have done the things they were instructed to do and they protected their attention span from bullshit, drama, time-wasting, vampiric things that this world will come at you with through social media, TV, movies, friendships, opinions, your family's opinions, the people you work with, Carl. All of that thing, all these things will be an impediment on your perception about what it is that you should be focused on right now. Because you're trying to burn those candlesticks faster than they're intended to burn. You know what I'm talking about. You're looking at that 15-minute candlestick, and it feels like a lifetime. You want it to reach your take profit. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you can't stand it. Your whole model is based on a 15-minute chart. But you'll drop down to a one-minute chart, which you've never looked at before. You're not even interested in it, even though I show examples of me doing it precisely. My students do it. But you're not comfortable in that time frame. But you'll bend your rules to go down to a one-minute chart because it seems faster. I can't wait for that 15-minute candlestick to finish. I wish it would burn faster. So let me just drop down a one-minute chart. It'll feel like time's going by faster, and it's not going any faster. That time frame is not moving any faster. There's no reason for you to be afraid of that one minute chart or a 30 second chart. Some of you are freaking out saying, my son's trading a 30 second chart. Man, he's in the fast lane. You know, he's doing something that he's not ready for. He's trading price. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Only thing you're doing at that with that time based chart is you're showing the highest fluctuation and lowest fluctuation for that interval. That it is measured, the fluctuation of price within that duration of time. That's the only thing that it's recording. But price has done the same thing on all time frames. It's moved up and down to those same price levels. The myopic infancy of fearing lower time frame charts or calling them noise is just a testimony to your ignorance. And that's not something that's derogatory. It says simply that you don't know what you're doing yet. He's learning, but he's doing something that I laid before him that is not even a complete model. And look what he's doing. What did you just say, ICT? You said that's not even a complete model. It's not because he's does, he doesn't require the level, the higher time frame take profit level, the draw on liquidity. To be even reached. What? Mm -hmm. Yep. If there is this insatiable desire for you to get there faster, I'm hoping that you are encouraged by my son's attempts to do this and his development. He started trading that funded account. And uh, I, I've since learned that when it, the screen says express, that's the that's the one that you can take money out of. That was my confusion. I, I thought an express was the part where you try to get funded. But that's the combine. So uh, yeah, I don't know very much about it, but he has three past combines and he activated or paid for one of them to go into a funded account. So he only has one technically funded and two on the sides where I guess 
if he doesn't do well or if he does want to do more, he can activate them later on. But he started trading it last Friday. And I, I told him, not yesterday, Friday, but the previous week's Friday. And I told him, I said, listen, here's what I want you to do. You can see where the 15-minute, the hourly, the four-hour, and daily lows and highs are. They're obvious. And right above that or below it is liquidity. You need to have an idea of which one you think the market's going to go to. But if you see a stop run, and this is the part where you guys have been asking, and you talk about it as a model, I'm doing it right now. I'm not going to do a fucking YouTube video about it, okay? Because you've already learned this. But because now my son's making real money with it, <laughs> you are interested in that. When it's something that you've already been introduced to. It's been taught at nauseum. And it's simple, isn't it? It's real simple. Everything I've ever taught is simple. But what complicates it is you sitting down and figuring out what you want to do with all that material. I'm not failing you as a mentor by withholding information. You are not doing the work that's required for you to sit in front of these charts and study. And what is it that he's doing? He's looking for predominantly, I told him if if it makes it easier for him to focus on a 15 minute chart or a 60 minute chart, so hourly or 15 minute time frame, he needs to see where the market is likely to draw to. That means if there's two relative equal highs and it's bullish for the day, and I lend him that experience, that part I lend to him. So for, for those that are out there saying, you know, oh, you're doing it, you're doing all this. If I was fucking doing it, the, buck, the fucking account would be over $12,000 right now. If I was doing it, it'd be over 12 grand. But he needs to do this. He needs to see what's possible in his own hands. And it's encouraging. And he's, he's, he's doing really well. He's not overconfident. He's actually very pleased. He's like, this is really neat that like, you know, this is nuts to make this kind of money, which is, I mean, you and I talking, we're adults. We, we, we know what, what $200 a day is. It's, it's nothing. It's literally nothing. But, you know, to an 18 year old who used to work at a coffee shop and grossed $400 a week, but paid twice a month, you know, biweekly, that's something significant to him. So I told him 15 minute chart, 60 minute chart. I will tell you what I think the bias is going to be for that day. And that'll teach you to focus. That's exactly what I was doing for my paid mentorship students. Every single day, I would tell them the bias. That's what they paid for. They paid for that mentorship. They paid for the experience that I was lending them. And they watched it happen 97, 98% of the time, literally come to pass. And it's all fucking documented. And anybody can say the shit they want to say, but it's all recorded. All time and date stamped, all before the fact. And ain't a fucking person, not one clown can say anything about it. And even my own students would have came forward and said, it didn't happen, and it never happened like that. And now you see it, because it's for free. I'm doing it in front of all of you. So I'm mentoring him in a limited, in limited capacity, but requiring him to do all the work. But he wants to do the actual button pushing. Okay. 30 second chart. What you need to see is on a one or five minute chart, before you drop down to that 30 second chart, you have already arrived at what you think the market's likely to do. And this is the part that everybody that's brand new or impatient or just wants to watch a five minute fucking trainer video and, and think that they are going to figure it out. Let's cut through all the bullshit and too much talk in ICT. You're boring shit. Fuck you. Get up the road. Go watch Joe Schmo. Okay, Mr. Reset. This is the real stuff. This is the part that you need to figure out. How do you trust that the market will go higher or lower? I can't tell you an everyday solution that you're going to trust because sometimes I'll go into the marketplace and my bias may shift because the market will do something that I didn't want to see it do. And because I have experience in, in the navigational skills to work within that, the time that it takes me to change my mind, I don't have time to sit down and explain to you what just took place in the chart that made me change my mind. Because I'm looking at a one-minute chart and sometimes less. 
But remove all that. And think about what I teach you on the market reviews and commentaries on the euro dollar. What were we aiming for? That old daily low. That's not support resistance. That's fucking liquidity. We were aiming for a move below the low. That's not support. Okay. We want to see it go down through it. We're targeting to it and through it. That is not fucking support and resistance. We're going in with the idea that the market's going to draw towards those actual orders that would be resting below an old low or above an old high if we're bullish. And you stick with that idea until proven clearly that you're wrong. And that same approach, you use it to every time frame. And for my son, I told him, I said, it'll be easier for you. Not perfect. It doesn't mean it's going to be flawless. You're going to lose. He will lose eventually. It will happen. He will have a losing day that causes him to have to sit still. Will that mean the model is broken? No. Some of you are just waiting for that to happen. Some of you are dying for that to happen. I'm not, I'm not impatient about it. I know it's going to eventually materialize. But he stops. If he follows the rules, he stops. And then he'll think about and have to entertain the idea of what it feels like being in that negative day. But guess what he has? He has the experience of having done it now six days correctly and making over $200. That same 200 bucks, that's minuscule. It's, I'll, let, me, let me rephrase that, okay? I'm talking as an American here, okay? Um, for folks that don't make that much money in the country that you're from, Please do not be offended by what I just said. I'm not trying to say anything to make you feel uncomfortable or be condescending. But in America, $200 is not a lot of money. I mean, frankly, if you go to the grocery store, you can't even put a quarter of uh, grocery carts worth of things in here and not at least be at $200 in, in grocery costs now. It's ridiculous. But in terms of monetary you know, money, it, $200 is an insignificant amount of money. But in the hands of an 18-year-old that doesn't have a home or a car payment, all these extra things, or a child to take care of, thank God, that's significant. And he outpaced his new job that he just started Monday as an HVAC tech you know, apprentice. He's trying to be a, you know, a heating and air conditioning kind of guy. He wants to start his own business eventually doing that. That's wonderful. He outpaced both of his previous job working in a coffee shop and he outpaced the income with overtime at $16 an hour, which is where he's working for 90 days and after that he goes up to $19 an hour. He did more in six days using this model that's not even complete because it's a graduated model. What does that mean? What does that mean? If that hourly or 15 minute time frame draw on liquidity amounts, you think that the market's going to go higher or lower to that specific liquidity. Then the only thing you're waiting for, if you're bearish, and I'll give you the example for being bearish, on the five minute or one minute, there has to be some short-term high traded above. Even in a run while the market's been going down, don't think model 2022. That, that, that's not what this is, okay? It's, it's not that. It can, he can take a trade with that model. Within that context of, of the market reversing, we don't need that. The market can be going down for the entirety of the day. If it hasn't traded to that 15-minute or hourly sell-side liquidity pool, it's not done. His model says aim in that direction. If it's 50 handles to get to that low, doesn't matter. He's not holding for them 50 handles. He's trying to get 10. But why would he do that, ICT? He's supposed to be your son. You know, why would you tell him to do that? Because he's a fucking human being, just like you are. Why aren't you making money with everything I've already taught? Why aren't you out there passing combines? Why aren't you getting fucking taking uh, withdrawals from your express accounts? Why aren't you doing that? Because other people are doing it. So stop putting fucking stupidity in the, in the conversation. 
He has to learn just like I had to learn. Every one of us has to go through that process. Learning how to do this takes time. It takes a lot of effort and you have to wade through a lot of bullshit that you bring to it yourself. You do. He's brought it to himself. He has now scar tissue trying to do it faster, trying to do it outside the rules I laid down for the first time. He blew his combine accounts. He's done it. He's done that damage. So now he has to go through what? The growing pains. And small little incremental wins and successes help mend that. Doesn't completely wipe it away, but it helps restore at least the proper mindset. And it encourages you. How many of you would have been encouraged if you would have made over $1,600 in one week? Trading a very small number of contracts. He did one trade that I'm aware of that he did two contracts on. But every other trade has been one contract of a mini, not a micro. He was adamant he doesn't want to do the micro. He goes, I want to do this, that. I want to, I want to make the $20 per point. I don't want to trade the $50 per point. Yes. Because he thought that ES, the $50 would be more scarier. It's not. It's actually a smoother, slower delivery. I wanted him to be an ES. But I allowed him, like I allow you as your mentor, to bring his own personality into it. Because you can't press everyone, even my son, you can't press everyone into a, a mold and make everybody come out like a cookie cutter result. It doesn't work that way, folks. It does not work that way. And if you believe these pieces of shit online that tell you that they can take everybody and turn them into the same thing, like a robot repeating over and over again, same bullshit, their results don't speak that. They don't even have profitable students that are consistently making money. I had students leave my stuff, go somewhere else in clownery, make all kinds of videos, say they're going to do all, all the, oh, we're making so much money now. And they deleted everything because they've shit the bed. You can talk the game. You can talk all that shit. In the beginning, you're going to talk all that shit. I'm going to make a lot of money with ICT's concepts. I'm going to quit my job at this date. And then when you start trying to learn it, it's like, oh, shit, what's going on here? You, you're rushing it. You're trying to burn those candlesticks too fast. And you're counting the grains of sand thinking you're running out of time. You have to learn it by this time or else. You're trying to master it. You won't master it. You're never going to master the market. You're never going to. I'm not a master of the market. I'll say that again. I am not a master of the market. I can only master myself periodically because sometimes the human element in me creeps in. I'll be mad. I'll be this, you know, discouraged about something that's going on in my personal life. I'll be distracted. I won't be in front of my charts when I should have been. I look at moves and I think to myself, okay, it would have been great to be in that. I'm not beating myself up about it, but I'm recognizing that. That's a character flaw. I'm human. You're going to have all those same things, but here's the worst part about it all for you. You don't know how to make money yet, but you feel rushed to do it. You got to keep up with the Joneses. You got to do everything else. And that's what my son wanted to do right away. You want to jump out there and be ICT junior, show the trolls what's what. And found out that it's not easy being me. It's not easy just going out there and taking some videos, taking some logic. Just heard from the lips of a man that's been dealing for 30 years and thinking that you can just walk out there and do the same thing. It doesn't work like that. It's harder. But he has to take that 15 minute or 60 minute chart and derive a draw on liquidity where he thinks the market's going to draw to. And as long as it hasn't traded down to it, if it trades to it one time, he's done. He can't use it. He can't use that framework. He has to wait another day or trade something else or wait in, you know, till the afternoon. So he doesn't have a specific time. Like he's not always operating in 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock. He'll, he'll trade when he sees that that. Liquidity is presently a draw. And if he wants to be in front of the chart, 30 seconds allows him to take that 10, uh, not 10, pivot, 10 handle run. 10, uh, 30 second chart is doing 10 handles all over the place inside of one hour, which is why I've always laughed at these fucking clowns. Like I could do their whole fucking month, their whole month. I can make their whole fucking month with a real money account. I could do that in 60 fucking minutes. 
I will lap their ass. That's why they talk bullshit. They ain't done shit but talk shit. But you don't need to have your tar your take profit or your draw on liquidity reach to for the, the model to work. You need to have an understanding of where the market is likely to reach to. <laughs> Let me think of it like this. Um, you're in a trade. You've been in a trade. You've taken a trade. You tried to do a combine. You did it with real money account or you did it with demo. And you put the trade on and you know you don't want to see it go to a specific price point. It may not be a stop loss that you actually put in there because you're afraid to put a stop loss in because that confirms and solidifies you were wrong. Instead of saying, this is where I'm wrong and I don't want to lose any more than this. That's the proper mindset about using a stop loss because you want to be right. You can't accept the fact that you're potentially wrong. If I was 100% accurate all the time, every single time, and I knew there was no chance for any manual intervention to ever step in there, I would never use a stop loss. Why would I need one? I'd be right all the time, right? But having a stop loss is a testimony to you respecting the risk, which is required. In the beginning, you don't respect the risk. You concern yourself with the risk of being right or wrong. That's, that's the, the limitations that you place on yourself in terms of mitigating anything in terms of risk. The risk of you taking a loss for the sake of doing it wrong. Not for the basis of you only took this much as a loss in monetary sense. And there's a paradigm shift that has to take place. And I'm teaching him how to do it. The only way I know how to teach it. Whereas you have to frame a 15 minute or a 60 minute draw on liquidity. Where the market's likely to go. And then on a one minute or five minute chart, if you're bearish, there has to be some run above a five minute swing high. Even while it's been going down, it has to go up above it and start trading lower again. And then once it does that, you can drop down into a 30 second chart and take a five, I'm sorry, take a, a 30 second fair value gap. Because the damage has been done on the five minute chart. It, it, it could have been a stop run on a swing high in a one minute chart. See, that's what a high frequency trading algorithm is doing. So you don't fucking know that because these clowns out there are talk, talking about algorithms. These want to be quants. You might talk about all kinds of shit and call things quant. You may say your shit's algorithmic, but it's retail. But every fucking high frequency trading algorithm, every single one of them has to have a disruption in order flow before they will institute a new order. That means they cannot go short until it goes up. It has to go up. Why do you think I taught you discount premium? Because I am algorithmic. Enigma is fucking talking to you. It's not a yin and yang fucking symbol on some bullshit. The market has to go up, purge some measure of liquidity. If the market does, I don't give a fuck what market it is. But if you're bearish and on a five minute or one minute chart, if they swing high, a short-term swing high on that five- or one-minute chart is taken out by one tick, and it trades lower. As soon as it trades lower, on well, what time frame are you talking about? Whatever time frame that liquidity was taken on. If you see the swing high on the five-minute chart has been pierced by one tick is all it takes. It doesn't need to fucking close above it. It doesn't need to have a certain measure of handles above it. One tick. Once it does that, that's a disruption. That's a disruption in order flow. That's it. That starts the sell program. Then on a lower time frame, it can be a five fucking second chart. It could be a one second chart. Okay, It doesn't matter. But I gave him a 30 second chart because it's easy to get in there and take a fair value gap after that disruption in order flow. Knowing that the market will gravitate towards that liquidity. We need not see it trade to it. Now, some of you that are familiar with watching lower time frames and have been with me for a while, your fucking gears are turning right now. You're like, holy shit. I can see this, and I'm not even looking at the fucking chart. I can understand exactly what he's saying right now. His juices are flowing, aren't they? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's there every day, every hour. 
every 15 fucking minutes, it's there. So forget the 90 second or 90 minute fucking bullshit. It's every 15 minutes, it's there. I literally could sit there all day long, trade just intraday volatility, just doing what I just told you. And mop the fucking floor with all these fucking people out there talking shit. Selling shit, robots and stuff. It's dumb. It's dumb. You don't need all that stuff. As soon as you take the very first fair value gap on the 30 second chart after that one minute or five minute disruption in order flow, that stop run and it, that time frame starts to trade lower, the very next candle when it starts to trade down, okay, you drop down to the 30 second chart and you wait for that little 30 second retracement because it's going to happen. And you look and see where your 10 handles would be. Place your limit order. Put your stop loss in. He risks 12 handles. He's willing to take 12 handles as a hit. To take 10 out. What the fuck did he just say? He just said he's using a negative R. Yes. Because your reward to risk model bullshit is a myth. It's a fucking myth. You don't even trade with it. You want to talk about it when you sell your courses and these people write these fucking books, but they're not trading with these fucking things in mind. Every person that's ever came out there and said that shit, give it enough time, they eventually come clean and say, well, you know, it's theoretical that if you did this, you can get 20 to 1. It's theoretical you can get 200 to 1, but they haven't really done it themselves. But hey, theory sells, right? You don't need to have a fucking three to one, a two to one, or a one to one. If you have a high strike rate, what's a high strike rate? What I just told you. How many times do I tell you something before it happens and it happens? It's real logic. Nobody gets lucky like this, folks. It's, th that doesn't happen. Luck doesn't exist here. It's statistical probabilities rooted in real algorithmic price delivery. Not retail logic trying to decipher something that has absolutely no basis on harmonic animal patterns. Elliott wave horse shit. Supply and demand horse shit. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. This stuff is predetermined. It's running on a script. Period. That's all it's doing. It's time-based. And you're complicating it. Worrying about dumb shit. Oh, it's dropped down. I can't sell short down here. It's been going down. Why the fuck not? It's going somewhere. It's going down the south town, okay? Below the old low, below the relative equal lows. It's got something down there it wants to visit. It's warmer in the south. It wants to get down there. It needs some sun. I can't do it. I just can't do it, man. It's, it's already gone down 100 fucking handles. I can't imagine it going down 35, 55 more where it should fucking go where the liquidity's resting below the lows. Why would it want to do that? <laughs> yeah, I can see why everybody would think that way because that's what all the bullshit artists talk about. The books, the people that don't fucking trade. They sell you all that stuff, like timeshares. Makes it sound like it's a wonderful thing till you get in. You wish you could get out of it. You can't. That just hurts somebody's feelings. Fuck. He just knew I wasted money on a timeshare. <clears throat> so once he gets his 10 handles, he's done. But what is he doing after he gets out? He's watching it still go towards that level. So what is it teaching him? What's it teaching him? Discipline. Cookie reward. Huh? Yeah. This is how you follow a rule-based idea. You go in very, very carefully. Do a little bit at a time. You don't need to get into a trade right now to make three times what you're risking. And, and view that as, oh, this is the only way to do it. Because right now, if you're honest with yourself, if you and I were in a, a conversation, it was just you and I. Nobody could hear it. It wasn't recorded. And I gave you my scouts on us. Promised that there was no way I was going to talk about who you are and what we talked about. And I asked you, right now, you have extraordinary results as a goal, and you won't accept anything less, right? And at first, they might look at me perplexed, like, no, I just want to make money. No, no, no. 
You want to be next to flawless. Hardly ever, if ever, taking a loss. Never putting your stop loss in the wrong place. And you're wanting to find a way to get to that point because you see me doing that many times. And you think that that just happens overnight. No. No. You conquer that bullshit thinking, that toxic way of internalizing your potential or progress in this by going in and taking out incremental movements towards a goal that's larger. My son's not going to be a 10-handle trader risking 12 handles. That's not what he's going to be. My son's going to be taking down the whole fucking daily range. From high to low, that's what he's going to be doing. But he can't learn that just going out there and just trying to do it from the beginning. You have to grow. You got to become confident after you have had your confidence been kicked in the nuts, basically. That's what he's done with his combines that he tried to do with ignorance, thinking it's going to be like a video game. This is not a fucking video game. It's not a video game. And any fucking clown that says that, show the testimonials from your students. Not the one that just found some market replay horse shit this week. Where are they at the last year? Where's their withdrawals? Where's their profits? I'm producing monsters. I'm producing fucking machines, terminators, motherfuckers that's going to be here long after I'm gone making money, doing it their own fucking way. And not giving a shit what anybody else says about what it is that they learned. Because they went through the process of doing it correctly. See, Cameron had a goal. He wanted to be out there about this time, by the end of the year, parading around, peacocking. Look what I did. Ha! Look at this. He had a hit list of all the YouTubers he was going to go into their comment section and do all this bullshit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But he got humbled. That's okay. It's good for him. It's actually good for him because it slows him down. Now he respects what it is he's trying to learn because he didn't have the respect for the risk. And now he processed a uh, – he, re he requested, rather. I don't know if he got it yet. I guess he'll have to tell me when he wakes up. But he asked for a $740 payout. So he said that they would only give him 50% of what he had already earned. So I guess at the time when he was requesting it before he made the other 200 and some dollars on Friday, it worked out to be like 740 bucks. He needed to see that. He needs to see it in his hands. And when that happens, it'll solidify it. Because again, $740 is literally fucking nothing. It's nothing. It won't even buy one tire for my fucking cars. So it's minuscule amount of money. But for an 18-year-old that doesn't even net that after taxes in a week, that's the whole new world to him. For some of you, if you just did that, not the $1,600, if you just made $700 a week, what would that do for you? So you don't think that way, do you? You don't think. What if I just made $100 a day and you started there and you built up your confidence? Are you consistently made, able to make a very small amount of money that's easily, easily, <laughs> easily reached? It's a low-hanging fruit objective. That's what I wanted to present to him. I said, look, 10 handles is easy. You can do this all day long once you get good at it. Like you can literally go up and down, up and down all day long and really just destroy it. But you can't do that without knowing yourself, how you're going to think, how you're going to feel. And the only way I could do this with him was teach him how to focus on a draw on liquidity that is highly probable. That means it's on an hourly or 15-minute time frame that has not been traded to. How do you know when not to take the trade, Dad? Did it trade to that liquidity pool on an hourly or 15-minute chart that you maybe would have looked at or had in mind? If it has, you're done for the day for that market. You can't trade it. How about that for fucking logic? How about that for fucking mindset, not worrying about or fearing missing out on the move? 
There's nothing to fucking worry about. And this ain't even a complete fucking model. It's incomplete. Incomplete, and it's beating the fucking ass out of 90% of the shit that you see on YouTube. Because it's rooted in sound logic. You have to have common fucking sense, folks. You can't go out there thinking, I'm going to swing for the fences like he was trying to do. He was literally doing fucking 15 contracts because they allowed it. Didn't know better. Well, he fucking knows better now, doesn't he? And now what he was trying to do, he's put that aside. He knows it's possible now because of what he's done with just doing $200 a day. With one single, 90% of the time trades, one single mini contract. And he's doing far better than he would do at his job. And did do better than both of his jobs. That's an encouragement. And the right mindset he has right now, I'm so proud of. I'm proud of that. And that's what I try to encourage. I don't try to encourage you to go out there and try to swing for the fences and have Lambo lifestyle overnight. That, that's, that, it's not practical. That's not fucking practical, okay? I'm sorry if that hurts your fucking feelings. But I'm not ever saying that you can't get there. But it's going to take you time to get there. And you can't be worrying about trying to rush through it, burning the candlesticks, trying to do more of the unnecessary shit, worrying about what that person did. How did they make that money? Fuck their money. Fuck what I made. Who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck what Cameron's making? Who cares? You can't spend it. Be inspired by it. Limit it to that. But don't go on the charts and waste your time trying to figure out, oh, it's this guy, this gal, this person has a video. This person posted this on their social media. This is what they did. Let me see if I can go in and figure out what they did. You're wasting your fucking time. You can't even do anything with that information. You can't do shit. The only thing it's going to do is cause you doubt about what it is you're trying to learn. And other people are fucking smashing it. Because they don't give a fuck what anybody else is doing. They're minding their own business. And that's exactly what Cameron started doing. Minding his own damn business. Instead of getting out there and trying to defend daddy. Daddy is a fucking lion. Just turn me the fuck loose. And I will eat these motherfuckers. Straight up. I'm out here begging for it. Crickets. Thirty second time frame offers so many opportunities to take ten handles out. Why twelve? Why twelve handles for a stop? Well, look at the thirty second chart. Look at the price delivery. Unless we're having a, an extrapolation in you know, one direction or the other, you'll see that ten handles is about mm, the the maximum. A very small little fluctuation would occur. 12 just puts you two handles outside of that. What happens when ICT's son takes a loss? He stops trading for the day. Because he can't trade less than one contract, right? I'm not having him go in with five micros to be sizing down. No, he just fucking stops. He needs to know what it feels like to sit in a losing net loss day. And it's okay. It's not cancer. It's not terminal. It doesn't mean your model's fucking done and over with. It doesn't mean that you fail as a trader. It just means that you had a transactional cost and now you paid the tax. That's the tax. Okay. That's the fare to ride on this fucking ride. Eventually, you're going to have to pay it. And some people want to pay more than what's required, like taxes. Stupid, financially illiterate people pay more income taxes than they're fucking supposed to. You're only obligated to pay what your legal obligation is. And some of you don't even want to take the time to look into what it is that you could save money on in that because you're financially illiterate because the, the schools you went to taught you to be that way. If I wasn't pushing my fucking boot in my kids' asses, making them work fucking jobs so they can taste the bullshit that this world wants to feed you, they won't want to work to do what I do. They won't want to learn how to do this. They have to be put in those situations. Otherwise, they'll have a silver spoon up their ass and think everything's owed to them. And it is not owed to them. Whatever I've made is owed to nobody else. My kids are not exempt from that. And the best thing you can do if you have children is to do the same thing. It builds character. It teaches them to be adults. 
and in trading, many young people and man child syndrome kicks in and they're not really fully equipped to be a trader. Having a good model in their hands won't work. Doesn't mean the model's bad or not effective. This means that they are incapable of doing it. I got nine minutes to finish this up. And I have so many other points I want to make. <laughs> the impossible task of counting the grains of sand, knowing I only got nine minutes left. But I don't think that uh, many of you even really appreciate what I'm saying today because the model is not complete. He's only working on one part of it. And even in that, he's doing fucking far better than he ever imagined he would be doing. For some of you, if you were just doing what he's doing right now, that's success. In your part of the world where money is different and things cost differently where you're at, you would be living very, very comfortably if you could do what he's doing consistently. If you're able to do that, you would be very happy. You wouldn't need to have Lambo lifestyle dreams and wishes to, to see that that would be deemed as successful. You'd be content. You would feel like you arrived. It would feel like you put the work in and therefore now you're seeing the results and you're thankful that you stuck with it. You studied. Instead of worrying about trying to take negative stimuli or negative opinions about other people telling you what you should and shouldn't do. And they have nothing to bring to you that would be better. They don't have a testimonial of a, a large group of people that are using the shit that they try to sell with fucking discount codes. There's no consistently profitable fucking students. There's always hit and miss. There's always flash in a pan. I have people that are doing this now for years. Not making $740 withdrawals, six-figure withdrawals. There's no fucking comparison. But those individuals did all the work to get to that point. My son wants to do more than any of you. He wants to do more than me, and I want to see it happen. I'm here for it. I want to make him bigger and badder and fucking just a ruthless motherfucker. I want that. But I know the frailties of the human mind. Because he's now got scar tissue. he done something that he wasn't told to do. He went against my advice. Recklessly. Did whatever, you know, whatever he wanted to do. And his ego and his pride was hurt. So the only way to build that back up. Is to show incremental cookie rewards. We have puppies right now, and we're, we're training them, and we have these little trainer treats we keep in our pockets. So if they do something we want them to do, in the time we tell them to do it, we treat them right then and there. It, it's a, a constant reward thing for you know a puppy to be taught properly. A human body and a mind needs that same thing. In the beginning, when you don't have experience, you don't want to be going out there pressing the button like my son did and fail and then feel grief about it. Learning how to trade with a real account, whether it be a large amount of money or a small amount of money, is the absolute asinine fucking way to do this because you're literally encouraging fear. You're encouraging uncertainty that paralyzes you because you're making it a scoreboard of, I lost money. No matter how much money it is, when you have that, it's real hard to get motivated. So when I teach, I teach it with a demo. And I teach how to go through back testing and, and collecting experiences where the market has done the very things I've taught. And I give you the benefit of knowing what I think is going to happen beforehand. So that way it holds you to an expectation in the marketplace. Does the market go higher when he says it goes higher? Does it respect those levels he's referring to? Does it trade to those pools of liquidity? Are you going back through the charts and looking for the things I teach? Is it in there? Is it happening? Don't require my own trades to be the only testimonial. If you do that, you're failing. Cameron's not even journaling. He can't do that right now. What did you just say? You heard what the fuck I said. He needs to have his pride restored. He's hurt. So 
the only way, and this is the best thing I could come up with, was give him something where, yes, these approaches, if he just would let the trade run, he could be making 30, 40, 60, 100 fucking handles. He could be doing that. But he doesn't have the patience to hold on to it because he's afraid it's going to turn around on him. He's afraid of that. And the only way you get over that fear is doing this. I wish I could learn how to hold a trade. I, I've been in so many trades. If I just would have held on to it, it went to my target. How do I fix that ICT? You take incremental exits and you hold yourself to the fact that this is what my trade was and I'm feeling discomfort. As soon as you feel the discomfort, close it and then watch the trade pan out. Or if it goes through where your stop loss would have been, you're thankful you didn't lose. But if it goes in your direction, you log it and you cheerlead yourself. And the next time you feel that uncomfortable point and you want to get out of the trade, wait two minutes. Not one, two. Literally two minutes. And then if you still feel uncomfortable, close the trade again. Then log it. If it goes to where your stop was, you did the right thing. If it goes a little bit further, guess what? Just like repetitions with weight training, you're adding a plate. You're adding one more uh, uh, repetition, and you're holding to failure. You're fighting the negatives. That's where growth happens. You can't just tap out as soon as you feel it all the time. You have to press into that uncertainty, and you do that over time. And I'm sorry, but a 40-day fucking trainer, a 120-day trainer, a one-month fucking boot camp, a one-week fucking crash course ain't going to fucking teach you that, folks. It's not going to fucking do it. I'm telling you, it ain't going to do it. I got a million fucking bucks that says it ain't going to find somebody going to do that, make a million dollars. ain't going to happen. It ain't going to fucking happen. But I'm making millionaires. Holla. What did they pay for it? Their time, sweat, stress. They had to go through the mill with ICT. And it's hard here. Only the strong survive. The weak get chewed up and spat out. Come next March, I suspect, based on what he's doing and what he's telling me in terms of his his perspective and what he feels and what he thinks he's not in a rush to get anywhere so i'm thinking he'll probably be able to do like 20 to 30 handle runs when he does his trades and this is a matter of this filtering the trades that allow for that meaning if the trade has still room to move that much if everything i just gave you in terms of the parameters if they're in play you just got to hold the trade what are you afraid of like, you know, I try to encourage that guy, Patrick Whelan. Like, he, he sometimes he has trades on, and I wish he would just – like, I, I would never tell him in his live stream, don't don't close it. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't do that because it's rude. But many times I'm doing I'm like, don't, don't, don't close it. Don't close it. And then it just keeps on running and running and running and running. And you can see he's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? He's – a wonderful person to watch because that's the thing that everybody won't talk about. That's the part you're trying to hide from your development. You don't want to go through that. He's doing it in front of everybody. It's entertaining, yes. He fell out. So what? I, I fucking cuss too. You're human, okay? And you get a priest in a situation hard enough, pressing enough, they're going to drop the F-bomb too. If they feel enough pain, they're going to do it, okay? Mer words are not going to do anything to anyone. What you give them, the energy, the power, that's when they hurt you. Holding on to a trade, and I'll say this in closing. The way you hold on to a trade is you have to be content with, all right, I locked in something. This is a good fucking day. I got $1,500 locked in on this trade. I'm aiming for $20,000. I got a fucking full pool on 10 lots. I know it's likely to go 100 handles. I know it's likely to go down there. But I'm going to wrestle my fucking greed because I feel like I have to take this $2,700 trade off that's fluctuating here and there above 3000 And you know, you know in your fucking heart that if you just let this fucking thing go, six and a half hours from now, it's going to be 100 plus handles. But you're wrestling with, but what if it isn't? And I don't take the $2,700 off. 
or it stops me out at $1,500 and I could have took the $2,700. That's ass backwards thinking, folks. That's fucking ass backwards. You're all talking about how you want to have these high multiple R trades, but you don't want to do the work to hold on to to get them. All these clowns out there that sell these courses and talk that high multiple bullshit, you do not see them taking. They would be billionaires. Why are they still selling fucking courses? Where's their fucking yachts? They're not doing it, folks. They're not doing it, period. Common fucking sense. Use it. I teach from a practical stance. I come to you with no fucking glitz. And I tell you exactly the way it's supposed to be. I tell you it's going to be hard. I tell you it's going to take you longer than you want it to be. I tell you that people are going to make fun of you because, you know, it, it's going to fly in the face of everybody else's logic. But the testimonials just keep coming in. That's undeniable. And you're in the waiting. You're you're on deck. You're next. You're the fucking next success story. But you're holding it up. You got to get out of your own way. You have to get out of your own way. I'm doing everything I possibly can, folks, except for take your fucking trades. Okay, I'm doing everything I possibly can. But you have to listen to these discussions. You have to listen to this because these are the things that's going to put all those things together for you as a trader. Whether it's my shit that you're going to use as a technical aspect or somebody else's dumb shit. Bottom line is, if it can be used as a catalyst to make a decision, that's all we're doing. We're using some kind of stimuli to make a decision, to act, to move, to do something, push the fucking button, do something. And then manage risk throughout the process. The only thing that separates me from everybody else is everybody else is holding on to a religion about an idea in an indicator based idea or something that's bullshit. It has no basis on why price is going to go up and down. I give you the best of the best. Practical, real world experience, 30 years experience of telling you what the fuck these markets are going to do, authorship, all throughout. You have the highest form of technical science. And the most practical sense of using what it is that we should be doing as a risk manager. I'm not telling you to go out there and trade with 15 contracts. I'm telling you to use one contract. Look what my son was able to do with one fucking week. One week. And he's not even hitting fucking doubles. He's just batting singles. Getting up there. Getting his tan handles. Boom. Sometimes. He's been spooked out of the trade, and he has to go back in and get that last $50. That's what he's working on now. But he's getting his 200 fucking bucks. He's getting his fucking pound of flesh. He's getting his meat. He's filling his fucking belly. But guess what? That cub, that little Simba he is right now, that motherfucker's going to be a Mufasa soon. And he's going to stand up. He's going to run through these fucking people on his internet, and he's going to run through and chew their asses up. That's who's coming. <laughs> and I'm fucking there for it. I'm going to give him every fucking weapon I have because I'm going to sit back and I'm going to pop the fucking popcorn and I'm going to watch him devour all you shit talking little pussy fucks that don't ever want to do anything but talk all your bullshit and make up these dumbass fucking movies, these fucking documentaries. Fuck your documentary. Why aren't you in the fucking Robin's Cup, motherfucker? You didn't fucking join. Let's go. I could still beat your ass before the end of the year. I can still do it, Benny. Come on, baby. Let me beat the shit out of your ass. I will fucking smoke you. But you're hiding. You're fucking hiding, you little bitch. Bent a knee like I told Tom Dante. You are a little bitch. My son can fucking outtrade you now. Fuck off. <laughs> you see it now? Benny versus ICT son. <laughs> I, I would do the trades then. I would do the trades just to fucking ridicule your fucking ass, you bitch. He'll take that challenge. <laughs> anyway. Don't waste your time trying to force too much in the beginning. Looking for things that are unnecessary in the charts. Focus on the things I tell you to look for. And don't put a destination or uh, an expiration on your success. Because what you're going to discover is throughout the process, and that's my son right now, he's in the earliest stages of real progress, and he's seeing the fruits of it. 
Many of you are recording in your tweets and responses to me that you're encouraged by that. How do you think he feels? How do you think he feels laying his head down thinking, I did more today than I did in pay working these 10 hours because he's doing 10 hour days. 10 hour days driving to Pennsylvania with the crew he's with and they pay him money until he gets to his car. And then once he gets to his car, and his pay stops for the day. But he's spending a lot of time out there doing that stuff, getting all cut up, putting his hands through these condensers he's helping install, all that stuff. He's, he's doing a working class hero job. He doesn't have a spoon fed fucking lifestyle where daddy's giving it to him because I have it. I wanted to be like that, but I, I seen that it doesn't work with my oldest boy. So I'm practical. I learned from the mistake. I learned how to do a better job at this. I'm not a perfect father, but when it comes to money, giving it to them, buying the stuff for them, apart from a car, I think everybody should have a car, but I don't just lavish them with money because I have it doesn't obligate them to receive it from me. They have to acquire it themselves. And once they have that skill set, they'll have greater self-esteem for themselves and their family, they will create, will be able to look up to them as a patriarch and say, I want to be like my dad. And I'm glad he didn't give it to me. He sent me a text yesterday. He said, Dad, I want to thank you for not being easy on me. And it was upsetting to me, but it was a good upsetting. It was very touching. I shared it with my wife. I said, you know, I, I've been hard on him the last couple of months because he didn't listen to me. And I told him, I said, you're going to do this or you're going to walk this whole show on your own. That means you know, you, you got everything you're going to get from me. Like you have to learn how to make your way in this world. You can't just accept the fact that, you know, shit's going to be hard and a coffee shop job ain't it. And you're not going to college. So what is it going to do? I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to own my own business. Okay. In the meantime, what are you going to do? I tried. It's hard, dad. I know. And my students complain about the same fucking way you are right now. It's hard, ICT. It's hard. They complain. You want to complain. It's normal. But instead of complaining, take that energy and direct it into studying, backtesting, taking the, the information that you see that's already happened. Pull it out of the charts. Record it. And it's there. And it will encourage you that it keeps repeating it over and over and over again. Now you're doing one little piece of something. You're doing one eighth of what's going to be a full model and you're doing better than your fucking job with the least amount of leverage. How encouraging is that? You're not even given the full move. You're just getting in there, getting 10 points of it. And then that's it. Pull out. Done. Hit it and quit it. Done. Then you get to see, was that a good move for free? He doesn't stop you out with a loss, and he never moves his stop loss. How's that? He doesn't need to. It's either going to run or it's not. If he hits a loss, he's stopping for the day. He's not going to go on a major drawdown. These moves happen every single day like clockwork. Every single fucking day. Don't believe me. Set out to, to disapprove me. Do it. Spend that this week. Spend that this weekend. Go through the charts and see if what I just fucking said is not absolutely the gospel in price delivery. It's happening, okay? It's happening every fucking day. That's why I'm cocky. That's why I'm arrogant. That's why I walk around like I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I know I can outperform every motherfucker on this planet. I know I can outtrade every fucking body. Everyone. More precise. More fucking money. Every fucking, every skill set, every KPI you want to set, I will beat that shit unbelievably in front of everyone. I will do that. Why do I have to keep asking? And you're sitting around doubting. All this evidence around you, all this shit around you. People outside of my own family, different walks of life, and they're bringing the, re the receipts and the results. They're doing it. Why are you sitting on the fence? Wasting your fucking time. You're wasting it. There's no reason for you to waste any more time. 
Get to work. Start back testing. Encourage yourself. Because even if you do half of what my son is doing, I promise you, you're doing better than 99% of everybody else in trading. And that's not an exaggeration at all because most people can't even make any money. If you just made $800 a week, fuck it, $400 a week. Most people can't consistently do that. They can't hold themselves to a process or a model. The only way you can do that is small little baby steps in the beginning. Don't put an expiration date on your success. I have to have it by this time or it's a failure. Don't have extraordinary results as the only acceptable result. That's what I was trying to do. Once I started seeing that I could make money, I set so high of a, a goal that it pushed me into blowing the accounts all the time. That's exactly what I was doing. I was doing that very thing. And I was abandoning the simple things of just taking the trades I knew that were going to be there. And I tried to squeeze more out of them. You can't make a dog be more than what it is. It's a dog. It's going to run and behave like a dog. In every one of my trades, I try to demand them to be a dragon. A beast of mythological proportion. And when it didn't deliver, I looked at it as, I, I'm never going to be able to do this. When all I was doing was doing everything backwards and asking of my models, which were very limited at the time, to do what, what they couldn't do. And I couldn't see it for that. Just got a text from my wife. <laughs> uh, you're late. <laughs> On my way. But anyway, I had fun today. Hopefully uh, I inspired you to think about things a little bit differently. And don't waste your time trying to force things in through these candlesticks. And uh, don't focus so much on how much time you got left. As long as you're working every day, working towards progressing, moving forward, you'll get there. You'll get there sooner than you thought once you get there. In the time you're spending right now, that might feel daunting and too laborious. Won't be so much like that when you look back on it. Everything seems so much further in front of you when you're trying to get there. The first time, it's always a long journey. It's that little kid in the back seat syndrome. We're there yet. That's that little that's that little child in you that's the traitor that's gonna be who you are. They're excited. There's nothing wrong with that excitement. Don't kill that energy. But you have to nurture it and properly train it. Say, okay, we're getting there. We're it's just a little bit longer. Just we have to keep doing what we're doing. Keep looking through the windshield forward. We're getting any every closer. Keep looking. Tell me when we get to the the Burger King sign. Tell me when you distract them. Small little incremental progressal, progressive milestones. And it takes their attention away from the grander scheme. And that's all I've done with Cameron. I've taken his attention from feeling like he can't get to that 20, 30 handle run model right now because he can't see. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? Time, experience, doing it. So you want me to be able to tell you something and, and it's just like a secret recipe. And it's the fact that you have to roll your sleeves up and submit yourself to this process all the time. And eventually, at what time, at what stage in your development, you're going to have that epiphany where it clicks for you like, oh, shit. Oh, I've been complicating this the whole time. I thought just would have just did this and not worry about all this other stuff. I would have been able to be here in a place of contentment a lot sooner. And imagine the peace of mind that brings when you don't have to do more than what's comfortable for you. And who gives a fuck what anybody else thinks about it? You're paying your bills. You're meeting your ends. You're content. You don't have any fear of missing any moves. You don't have any fucking greed. Your model says, I'm making $1,000. When I make it, I stop for the day. Who's going to complain about that? You're probably not making $1,000 in three months trading right now. 
Start small. Build on it. I covered a lot of things in this discussion today. For the people that's been with me for a while, they have had a lot of really impactful things that to consider and how to think about what it is that they've done or what they're doing and how you can strip down price. Go right to the core essence of what it's likely to do right now. You don't need these high-end models. I gave 12 of them in paid mentorship. I did that because I had people in there selling my videos, selling my courses, selling access to my forum, which I don't have anymore. Those models make money. But I knew that I could use those platforms on later teachings to those same paid students. And I could teach them a way where I can take them and plug and play, which is what I promised. Once you understand the logic and the language, then I'll teach you very shorthandedly to go in and do this and do this and you can have a model. And I did it publicly with the 2022 model. I've done it with the silver bullet. Optimal trade entry has been there before I even did mentorship. And the paid students that have done the work, they can see now how it's very simple to do these things. And they themselves are the ones that complicated it. I could sit out here every single Saturday and outline a new model. And every single one of them are independent of one another. And I could do that for the rest of my life and not run out of models. Ask your mentor if they can do that. Oh, we don't need to have that. You just need it. Right. That's exactly what I say. You only need one. But the problem is, is everybody. I, I don't want to stop talking. <laughs> my wife's going to slap the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't want you to feel like you have to be pressed into a mold. And I'm trying to do my best because I would want this in a mentor. Like I would want this. I would want my mentor um, sharing with me, knowing that he's going to have physical harm from his wife later on because he's kept her waiting. <laughs> she, she already knew when I told her I was going to be an hour. She's like, uh-huh. You sure? I told her, I said, here, look, I got the timer set. <laughs> she said, where's the snooze button on it? <laughs> But anyway, I do have to get off here, but I had fun today talking with you. all Hopefully I've inspired you. Hopefully I've, I've got your, your gears turning on how you can kind of settle yourself down, look towards progress, not finality, not at the finish line. I started last week. I should know how to trade by now. That, that, that's stupid. That, that's stupid thinking. That's unrealistic. But I, I, I want you to think about this in closing. There's a lot of closing statements here today. I'm glad that my son, initially I wasn't real happy with him wanting to do these funded accounts. Like I, I, I was not happy with that. But today, waking up, I'm glad that he did it because he's showing through a third party audited setting where it's not something that he can lie about. It's not something I can lie about. It's not something that it can be photoshopped. It's not somebody else's account. They would come out, and I'm giving Top Step permission. If anything that he shares with me that I end up tweeting, if that's not true, you fucking call me out on it. Call me out on it. Because some of you might miss that. Some of you might miss the fact that this young man is doing this in a setting where I'm not affiliated with this company and neither is he. So there's no broker arrangement where they give me some fake results to market some bullshit. That, that's not what's happening here. This boy is doing something using what you're learning. The only thing I did was take some pieces and say, do this, do this, do this. Did I teach him something new? No. You need to know where the market's going to draw to liquidity. You need to wait for some kind of manipulation to stop run. Why would you not be fearful of taking a short after that stop run? Because it's already done the damage on that five or one minute chart. So it's going to now start displacing towards lower prices if it's bearish and price will spool in that direction. It doesn't mean every candle is going down. It does not mean that, but you will see several 10 handle runs. Every day, it's like that. 
every single day. And you can trade without a daily bias with this, which is why I taught him this model. Because he doesn't know how to know what the daily bias is. I just told him, said, 60 minute or 15 minute time frame. Where's the higher lows that haven't been touched yet? If it starts breaking towards those levels, chances are it's going to go there. He's going to have a losing day. It's going to happen. I, I hope it's this week sometime. I want him to have that, and I want to hear what he's thinking, and, and I want to allow him to tell me what he feels. And I will record our conversation the other side where you can hear it. I want him to articulate what he's feeling in contrast to what he's been feeling right now because he feels like he's walking on clouds right now. But that first loss, that real monetary withdrawal from progress moving forward, and you got to go one step backwards. That's the beginning of a blown account. That's the beginning of the end of your trading career, if you let it. That one single loss. It all starts there. That one little seed. That one little seed that grows to a, a garden of weeds when you are aiming for roses. And I'll have the opportunity to counsel him through that. And when it happens, you'll have the benefit of hearing from his side hearing it, feeling it, and then me telling him how he should think about it and work towards going through it. You don't get that in books, folks. There's no other mentorship out there that's doing that kind of thing. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is the brass tacks. This is the shit that you need to know and how to deal with it. And it's being done in a setting that is outside my control, outside of his control. There's no affiliation here, none whatsoever. I don't tell you to join with Top Step. I don't do that. I don't give a fuck if he makes a million dollars trading with a funded account. I would still never say go with a funded account. I don't rep brokers. I don't rep funded accounts. I don't have any affiliation whatsoever. My opinion is mine solely, and it's my my responsibility to be open and upfront and tell you that there's nothing inspiring me to have an opinion, whether it be good or bad for anything. And I may be incorrect in my opinions. You know, It may not be in agreement with you. And that's fine. That's wonderful. That's wonderful to have that type of discussion where I'm presenting my side of it and you may not agree with it. And I respect you for not agreeing with it. Don't take whatever everything I say and just say, well, it's this way it has to be. Look into it. See if it means something to you. If it doesn't, discard it. Don't waste your time with it. Take what's useful to you. Even if it's something that's outside what I teach, if it helps you, God bless you with it. I want to see you succeed. If you can get successful in something that I've not taught, like say you try to do this and you can't do it with what I'm teaching and I don't do well enough as a mentor for you and you go and you do something else. I would love to know what you did. I want to see you succeed. I don't give a fuck if somebody else is making money off of you and you found success. If that's what it took for you to find success, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm not belittled by that. I'm not embarrassed by that. I don't feel like a failure. I want to see all of you. Even if you don't like me, I want to see you do well. I want that to happen for all of you. And I'm not making any money here talking to you. I'm risking life and limb. <laughs> my wife's going to fuck my ass up when I get out of this fucking office. <laughs> but sincerely, I want to see you succeed. And I want to see your success stories. And if there are success stories and other fucking approaches, I wish there was more of it online. I'd like to I'd like to see that. It's like Market Wizards book, but you're seeing people's faces. You're hearing their voice. They're telling you their experience. And that's what I love about our community here because my students do that. They come forward and they share that. That's why I like Kit and his community he's created over there. That's awesome. I love listening to that. I love listening, even the folks that come in and they have a different train of thought about it. And they'd share their ups and downs, their trials and their tribulations, the things they had to go through. That's the stuff that matters most because everybody has to go through it. You're going to go through it, folks. This meat grinder will put your ass through it. You're not going to walk in here, waltz through, come out with no fucking wounds. You're all going to have damage done to yourself. And those war injuries are going to make you formidable. You're going to know, don't step there. In the presence of somebody that doesn't know any better, don't step right there. That's a grenade. 
tripwire right there. Don't don't do that. What do you mean? Don't do it. Young Buck gets out there and does it anyway. <laughs> Blow their account. People that have been around this industry long enough, they know things that you don't know. And if they're willing to share their experience with you, and it's realistic, and it's you know it's provable that they've done something with it, and other people have done something with it that's profitable, not just bullshit for clicks and clout. That's usable information. Take advantage of that. When I came up, they didn't. We didn't have that. We didn't have people willing to sit down for nothing and make videos or talk to you in a stream like this. Like I have better things to do. Like I have things to do and people to do it with and my wife. And you might be thinking, I love this more than I love my wife. No, it's just I'm obsessive. <laughs> when I'm with my wife and I'm doing things with her, I don't want to go to the charts. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to, it's whatever I'm doing at the moment, that's where all my attention is. I'm 100% in that moment, that very thing. And you want that in a mentor. You want that in someone that's teaching you where they don't run out of energy. They don't tire. Because if this stuff didn't work, it would be real hard for me to have the energy level I have. Think about it. You ever think about that? Think about that. If somebody didn't have success and didn't have the ability to be able to transfer that information and wasn't constantly inspired by the energy that's getting brought back to me by my students, I could not have this level of output. Nobody could. You can't keep running on empty. Okay? Fumes ain't going to carry this machine. We're running on rocket fuel here, and it doesn't run out. It just keeps never running out. Like Elijah told the widower and her son, make me a cake. Oh, well, we only have enough oil here for me and my son. We were going to eat it and die. Make a cake for me. What, that, what does that mean? He laid out a process. His experience, he knows that the Lord's going to provide. You provide to me. Don't worry about anything else. He didn't say, don't do this or do this and don't worry about that. He just said, do this. He laid before her a process. So she made him a cake and her oil didn't run out. I'm teaching you how your oil won't run out. I want you to have a very good weekend. Relax. Try to do some studying. Don't do too much. Pace yourself. And I will be back, Lord willing, on Monday on Twitter to share more insights with you. So I'll talk to you then. Be safe.